Welcome to the show that you've always been waiting for every Sunday evening, none other but the Gorgeous Woman Show. I'm your host as always, Leverend Uthu Amoyo on CTN TV Live. Um, and as always, um, we feel obliged to be an inspiration to another woman because that is our duty to encourage one another. And as always, I'm joined by a beautiful, gorgeous woman who's come today who has many titles to her name, uh, but she told me to simply call her Pastor Janet Dennis. She has a passion for youth. Uh, she's in Shakina ministry, but her passion is in the youth ministry. So welcome so much, Pastor. Thank you, ma'am. It's yeah. a pleasure. It's an honor. Yes. Thank you for having me. You're most welcome. Yes. So who is Janet? Um, Janet? Basically, from where she was born, who she is now, ju just a brief about who you are. Janet is a lover of God. Amen. Um, I'm a single mom, mm. a divorced mom. Yes. I'm a mother of three beautiful daughters. Amen. Oral adults, above uh. 18, the youngest Above 18? Yes. Oh, goodness. Yes. You must have gotten them when you were a little bit younger. <laughs> or maybe there's a secret to remaining young. It is the glory, glory to God. It is the glory. <laughs> Amen. When God does it, yeah. you thank God for him. Amen. Yeah, he's been gracious. So glory to God. I'm born and brought up in Nakuru, mm -hmm. Nakuru Bondeni. Mm -hmm. That's where I was born, that's where yeah. I was brought up. But yeah. uh, after a few years, we started traveling because of the nature of my parents' work. Mm -hmm. So they kept on transferring from one town to another. Mm -hmm. So I've crisscrossed the country. Oh, yeah. They transferred. My dad was a police officer. Mm -hmm. So he was being transferred from one town to another. So, so you moved on. with him? Yeah, I moved with him. Mm -hmm. and then later, they separated with my mom. Oh, my. So we lived with my mom and also her nature of work. She got employment. It wasn't easy until she got employment. So I kept on transferring as she transferred. Until we had to She go. was a police officer as well? No, she was a secretary by profession. Okay. Yeah, she was working with the Agricultural Finance Corporation. So were you aware what was happening in your yes. parents' marriage? Yes. What was the reason of divorce? Uh, my dad used to beat my mom a lot. Wow. A lot. Uh, to a point that she fell sick. She, had a, she started having a chest problem. Because you know those police boots should beat her with them at night. And uh, the major problem was my mom was very beautiful. They all passed on. They, they both passed on, my mom and dad. Oh, so yeah, she was very beautiful. And uh, being a secretary, my, mom, my dad thought she's having affairs with the boss. So she would beat her so much because of so that. So your dad was a bit was insecure? Yes, yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. and, she, and my dad was a womanizer. Mm -hmm. He had uh, so many women. Okay. Yeah, so... That was one of the things why he used to beat her. And so every night, should he, my dad would come late and would start beating her immediately. Even at some point, she was very sick and she was always told to wait on the couch. She should not go to the bed. So, she, was, she had a condition? Yes. Be because of the beating? Yeah. A, a chest problem which developed into asthma and actually is the one eventually that took her off. Yeah, it started, the condition started when she was six months pregnant with me. Mm -hmm. So it continued worse and worse as she continued and she was giving birth after every one and a half year. We are three in the family, I'm the firstborn mm -hmm. with two brothers. So that affected her so much and because of taking the asthmatic medication all throughout the years, mm -hmm. it also made her heart weak. Okay. So eventually she died out of a heart attack. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That must have been difficult. It was difficult. It was wow. difficult. But after they separated, mm -hmm. my dad had a number of women. So he's, they and separated going. when she was still unwell? Yes. yes. And how old were you that time? I was seven years. Seven years. Mm. So basically you've grown in a family of a single parent. Yep. Yep. And now you're a single parent. Yes. Wow. <laughs> Our view of, we are going to talk about it in this story. is none other but Pastor Janet. And as always, Reverend Ruth Wamoyo here. Don't touch that dial. Share with somebody. Let them know that there is a story that is going to inspire them. See you after the break. Welcome back, our viewer, Pastor Janet Dennis. Yes. So your 
mother uh, you were raised by a single mom yeah. at the age of from the age of 7 yes. so i can imagine your siblings were younger they were younger i was 7 my the one following me was 5 the other one was 3 so two years ago. how was it like growing up without your dad uh, it was difficult but it was peaceful oh yeah there was no no fights mm -hmm. it was difficult cuz uh, we were living a better life with my dad mm -hmm. so coming back to my mom my mom had nothing that and it was we used to live at uh, Kamukunji police station mm -hmm. so my mom we went back to my mom's place in Akuru they didn't have a place so we rented a house in Bondeni estate it's like the majengo of here wow. yeah that's where we stayed with my mom and she started hustling getting a job and her mom came also stayed with us my grandma now took care of us but for my mom to have left my dad's place it's the mother to my dad that told her if you continue staying here you'll die the mother in law now yes you will wow. die he will kill you wow because of the beatings was he a drunkard yeah very okay yeah very 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 mm -hmm. so that's why she went and then after she went my shosho now the mom to my dad mm -hmm. told her you go get a job get somewhere you can stay come get the kids and then she was like i cannot manage she was like i'll show you how you shall do it so shosho is the one who helped her to steal us she stole us from my dad through the help of the father now to my the, the mother to your dad yes <laughs> she's a gorgeous woman yes rarely do you see such an arrangement no, you don't wow. Actually, she's the one i'm named after mm -hmm. so she's the one who helped her and we managed to, of course, it, it's a police camp, so how will she get us out? Yes. But now with Shosho, yeah. they cannot ask her. Yeah. Because it's like we pretended to be giving her an escort. Yeah. Of course, we left with sleepers, just like that. Were like you here. aware you were leaving? Me, I was aware, but my two brothers were not. They okay. were still too small to understand what was happening. Mm. But me, I knew, and I was and very you were excited. Happy about it. I was very excited. Because I was tired of seeing the different women that were coming to spend the night at home. When mom is there? No, after my mom had gone now, when they had separated. Yeah. When my shosho told my mom to go, my mom went and now try to get a place where we can come live and stuff like that. So when we were left behind, my mom's friends were the ones that became my dad's girlfriends. So it wasn't interesting. In fact, one time my mom came to see us because she would sneak into see us and I would tell her, imagine mommy and auntie squeezing the analala kwa bediako. You know, because I could see those things. So it wasn't good. I was jealousy. Why would another woman sleep in my mom's bed? Yeah, and you were just yeah. innocent. You would just say it as Yeah, it I is. just say it as it is. Wow. So, and in fact, she was, she was pretending because she was even a mukorino. She had a <laughs> turban. So I was very annoyed because of that. But uh, eventually, so I was happy to leave that place. Mm -hmm. And went and started life now with my mom. Okay. Uh, we went to Nakuru now, back home. I started school again now in Nakuru. I continued from Nakuru, Bondeni Primary. In fact, I took my daughters the other day to see where I went to school and where we used to live. They wow. couldn't believe it. So after two years, my mom got a transfer. She had to leave me with my auntie, which was hell on earth, because my auntie in the same place in Bondeni, now we, as we had shifted, we had gone to another Kalevo, so we were staying in another estate, mm -hmm. Kaloleni. So now we were here. My dad, my auntie, the one I was living with, was a brewing changa. So that's where I went to live. I learned to brew changa at the age of 10. Yes, and of course, we started smoking there. We are taught how to do all those things. My mom saw things were tough. She took me to a boarding school. So I went to a boarding school at Narok. Sangale Primary School, mm. and I had to repeat start six now to go to start six and seven. Wow! Yeah, so so you jump from the pan to the fire. Yeah, and your auntie was okay with that arrangement. Yeah, that's what she, she was does. actually happy to get help. Yeah, because even her daughters, her children are doing the same. So who do you think you are? Join the business. Wow. This is how we feed. So, how will you eat if you don't do this? Wow! So I had to know how to do it. And your brothers went with your mom? Yeah, my brothers went with my mom. Wow. Uh, in fact, my, the one following me also had to be taken to a boarding school now. My mom decided we are not going to live with relatives or anyone anymore. She wow. So at school. what point did you now mature up and decide to get married? Uh, while still in school, mm -hmm. in boarding school, I looked for my dad. I called him because I knew 
I could hear them talking which police station he's at. Thankfully, we had the reverse call. So I just called to the police station and said, I want to speak to him. So I sold my mom out where we had been hidden in school, but I wanted him to come and give me money. So he started taking care of us, kidogo, kidogo, paying school fees. And by God's grace, I managed to reunite them. They didn't live together, but they made peace. So they became friends. So I'd visit during holidays like that, go to my dad's with my brothers. At least there was peace by the time they all died. Did, yes. he, re did he remarry? Yes, he remarried mm -hmm. like three times. But by the, the time he was dying, he had the last one now. He had two, three other women after my mom. Yeah. He died of natural causes of sickness? Kidney, kidney failure because of drinking. Wow. Yeah. Well, that's what took him off. Yeah, so yeah. that must have been very tough for you. Yeah, it was. Yeah. But uh, I think uh, I had managed that life. I had become tough hardened, as well. Yeah. yeah, I had been hardened. You know, yeah. when you grow in that area, you just become. Yeah. It's normal. It's not a big deal. It it's was true. life. Later, when I looked back, I was like, hey, you have been through this thing. Yeah. But at that time, I was okay. I was cool with it. And I went to school. He paid for my fees even in high school, in college. We became buddies. I forgot the past. We became very good friends. And he was no longer that abusive man you would say? No, he was, I had a condition. And you tell him on his face? Yes. Sit <laughs> away. And since he, if I don't come, my brothers won't come. Yeah. So he had to be good to us. Because he didn't have more kids with the No, other women. he never. He never. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Wow. So, so that was it. Okay. So, yes. So um, we enjoyed and they continued and uh, later... In, after I finished my college, I didn't finish my college. I went for a secretarial college, Friends College, Kaimosi. And after my first year, I got a job. And I was like, Mami na so nini, why do I have to go to school if I'm going to school to get a job? See, I will go to school and do evening classes. I'm still doing evening classes to date. So I got a job. <laughs> that was it. I started my career there. And... Uh, I wanted to get married at the age of 20. My mom refused. I was very annoyed because I saw she was ready for marriage. But I couldn't understand why she's refusing. So I told this guy, me, I have a plot. I know the, the, the one thing that my mom won't accept in her house. It's me getting pregnant. Yeah, let me just get pregnant and that's it. Wow. And yes, I got myself pregnant mm -hmm. with my firstborn. And my mom goes like, Ata ukizai, Shirin, you're not getting married to that man. Why did she give you any good reason? Because he was a very irresponsible man, according to my mom. Mm -hmm. I didn't see that. He was a good guy, a quiet guy. In fact, the guy had taught me something good. Chewing mirror. Oh my goodness. So to me, this is good. You are chewing Mira? Yes. Okay. All night long. And you felt very nice that he taught Very you much something. comfortable. He thought, this is not like beer. I won't harass anyone. I won't go to pubs. I'll be in the house. So to me, it was a good thing. Wow. Yeah, he was a and good And your guy. mom was aware? Yeah, that's why he was, she was so mad about it. Mm -hmm. So, okay, according to my mom, she couldn't believe that you can chew mira without uh, madawa zingine, yeah. bangi and all that. But surely we were not. Mm -hmm. it, was just, it was just no bangi. Mm -hmm. Okay, at times he could... For me, Akit was so innocent. He would give me some two pills. Ati, hii ukikunywa unalala, because mira inapoteza usingizi. So me, it wasn't anything bad. I was not understanding what's the problem with my mom. But my mom now knew the family better because the sister to this guy was my mom's friend. So my mom would tell me this family, the men from this family are very responsible. They don't take care of their families. You cannot go through what I went through. I was like, no, it cannot happen. This is a good guy. How can you pump a mom? Yeah, because you, for you, or what you knew was dangerous was beer. Yeah, that wow. was my only problem. Wow. So I went ahead and got myself pregnant and my mom refused and she was like, Zau let and talea. You're not getting married there. And that was the beginning of problems because even the guy himself, when he went to tell the, ma the parents, the father said as, I'm a daughter of a single mother. We're a malaya. 
aizi kuja hapa na ni wa kutoka nyeri my dad is from nyeri nyeri watatuchapa so he also refused so everything backfired take care of my baby but we still proceeded on with our relationship which was now not as strong yeah, as before as before because number one i was very annoyed because how can you follow what your dad has said because for him he obeyed the dad but for you yes me madly, I didn't. you are madly in love yes yeah. and here i have already done something that is shameful to my mom mm -hmm. why you why can't you do the same mm -hmm. so anyway we were on and off on and off and within that time i just decided enough is enough i don't even want him anymore so we parted ways my mom took care of my daughter she said she'll take care of herself because i named her after her and uh, i had a good job all i need was to give my mom money me i go ahead with my life and in the process i got so frustrated in life until i found jesus amen i found jesus found me oh yeah i didn't find him but I was seeking because I had an emptiness in me. My mom brought us up in a Catholic church, very faithful, attending services, masses, and all that. I was even one of those girls that reads the first sermon, the second sermon, you know, everything in church. And I was doing all that, but I had an emptiness in me. Wow. And I was like, no, Mr. Key, I want something else. And that's how now I started trying to get something what I don't know what it was mm. until now I knew it was salvation. And uh, my mom also got saved at that time because mm -hmm. I, I became very riotous. Out of frustration now, I became very riotous. So out of that also, my mom, I pushed her to God. Wow. Yes. Wow. So she got born again and now she started praying for me. Mm -hmm. It was very interesting because she was still working at the AFC here in town. And every lunch hour she went, prayer request for my daughter to get saved, for my daughter to get saved. I was in, I was in every lunch hour fellowship and God had that. Amen. I got saved on my own. Nobody mm -hmm. preached to me. Mm -hmm. I just had a voice wow. speaking to me. I, I felt sick. I can't understand. I was just scratching. Kujikunakuna too all over, especially when it's cold. Mm -hmm. So that I had to take leave from my workplace and mm -hmm. go stay with my mom because I couldn't do anything for myself. Mm -hmm. And during that time, when I was just alone one day during the day, I had a voice telling me, if you don't get saved, you will die. I was like, what do you mean? What has this sickness got to do with salvation? And I argued, I argued with the voice until he told me, if you don't get saved, you'll die. I was like, God, I believe you're the one speaking to me. Mm -hmm. I will try you. I will get saved. If I don't get well, I'll backslide. Wow. I knelt down, gave my life to Christ on my own. Instantly received my healing. Amen. I woke up, glory to God. My mom used to leave me on the couch in the sitting room so that everything is near me because I can't do anything. I woke up, went to the bathroom, showered, cooked another meal, everything. By the time my mom was coming in the evening, she couldn't believe it. What happened to you? I told her I got saved. She was like, she told me in Kiku, no, wow. because she didn't believe I can get saved. I was like, Mommy, I'm, sh I'm honest, I'm serious. It's just like Peter, they were praying for his yes. release. And uh, everybody is saying, uh, it Nobody is not Peter, believed I could get saved. I know. The following morning, I told her, Mommy, you know what? Tomorrow morning we are going with you. We used to live in Gedurai. We hawk all those inside. We would leave home very early at 5 a.m. in the morning. I told her, Tomorrow morning I'm going for morning glory at your place of work. Because also you used to work with AFC. Mm -hmm. And she, they knew what kind of a person I was. Yeah. I told her, I'm going to give a testimony that I've gotten saved. Are you sure? Please don't put me to shame. Mm -hmm. Just be sure first. I told her I've made my mind. So I went to the office, I went for the morning glory and I testified. They couldn't believe it. Wow. They couldn't believe it because I was like a prayer item to each and every one of them. Wow. So now I, they prayed over me again now, now in front of people now and confessed. Now for real, you got Now confessed. for real, yeah. I confessed and Amen. they prayed over me and Amen. now they walked with me. Glory to God. That was back in 1991. Amen. Yes. Wow, what a testimony of God's grace. Amen. Sometimes when God is doing something new in your life, it's even hidden to people who are mm -hmm. close to you. Yeah. Imagine her getting born again after all years of prayer mm -hmm. and they're still not believing. I pray that even as you watch, God will do something amazing and unbelievably so before your friends and family. See you after the break. Yeah.
Welcome back, our viewer. My guest, Pastor Janet, has been through it all. God has allowed her to taste the good life after salvation. So, Pastor Janet, now you yes. go testify at your mom's office. Yes. Now they believe that you are born again. Yeah. What was the journey from that time now that now, you got born again? I went also to my office and yeah. told my boss I've, got born, I've gotten born again yeah. and I'm back to work. He was like, you don't need to play with my mind. I was like, no, I'm mm. serious. Mm -hmm. I was working at industrial area. So he wanted to see how I'm going. And I told him, I've gotten born again. He couldn't believe it. Nobody could believe it. How now? So the problem was now when I kept on asking for permission of a lunchtime. I was like, I'll come early in the morning. Mm -hmm. But lunchtime, give me 15 minutes more yeah. so that I'm, I'm able to go for lunch hour. Wow. He couldn't understand that. And I managed. I had a very intimate work with God. I was radical. I transferred from this to that. Yeah. So I started seeking God seriously, praying, fasting, and God started speaking to me and transforming Amen. my life. I was in that office for like nine months only. I told God, now the first thing, I want a job in town. Wow. So that I don't have this problem of lunch hours. Yes. So that I can be attending lunch hour at my mother's office. So God did it. I got that job and uh, things now started changing in my life. Mm -hmm. Now I started serving God seriously, looking for youth meetings, I had been a youth person all along, even when I was growing up with uh, my brothers, mm -hmm. being the firstborn and two brothers behind me. Mm -hmm. I was a tomboy. So my brother was a footballer, the one who follows me, and we were like twins. People used to say we look alike. We still do look alike, and he tells them, Unona kama ya konandevu, because <laughs> he still disputes we don't look alike, yeah, but yeah, we, don't, we, yeah. we do look alike. So I started that youth ministry under um, Reverend Steve Munga, Oh, we used yeah. to go with him for meetings. Yeah, yes. I served under his ministry and I received the impartation from that. Mm -hmm. So I had that desire for youth and I continued like that. But now it came a point I wanted to get married. Now that was the trickiest part and of you're my in life. Church. And I'm in church. And you're a single parent. I'm a single parent. Yes. So now the trick part was that uh, there are so many good guys that really are coming to me. But I'm like, mm mm. I don't want to have children with different fathers. I have to get married to the same one. The same guy is still waiting for me. He keeps pressurizing me. But I'm waiting for him to get born again. He's not getting born again. So how do I go with this? How do I go along with this? As I talk to my pastors, they're like, no, you cannot get married to him. I went into prayer. I went into uh, to, to Ngong Hills to pray. And God spoke to me and told me he's not the one. I have a man of God for you. For where I'm taking you, he cannot go with you. I'm like, where are you taking me? Where can I go? I was living at Jericho. <laughs> it was my own house. My dad had given me the house. So to you, it was... <laughs> you were you geographically know? where you yes, were settled. me, I'm settled. You did not know there's a no. spiritual journey. I was like, if I'm going somewhere, it's Buruburu. <laughs> <laughs> and this guy can go to Buruburu, it's not an issue. So I fought with it. <laughs> that is so humorous. <laughs> yes, I went for counseling to different pastors and they all refused. Wow. I was like, you guys, you don't know me. I want him, I'll get the him. The heart of man. Yes. Wow. I told him I'm set. We can come, we stay. And he's still chewing Mira. Yep. I'm okay, he's, that's all he does. And I have money, I'll take care of the family and everything. I was having good money. So he came to my house. We lived in my house in Jericho for a number of years. The guilt was too much in me. I moved from one church to another, running away from this guilt. Hey, I couldn't hold it. I was like, ah, uh -uh. now we have to do a church wedding. Maybe the guilt will go. We pursued with the parents. Eventually they gave up. They're like, okay. You are wasting time. You go ahead. So my parents agreed. He's refused. We stayed. We were like, you know what? And he's still not working. He's just doing mirror. He has, he, at, at first you know, he had a job, a very good job even when he was doing mirror. He was working with the uh, Standard magazine in industrial area. He was having a good job. In fact, at that time initially when we met, I was having a good job. I helped him even get an, I would support him here and there. Then eventually, table stand, he got a better job than me. And that, 
at that point, he started frustrating me as well. But I was still madly in love with him. I didn't see anything. I'm not going to have children from different fathers. So at some point, we are like, let's have a second child. So I get myself pregnant. Second child. So we are like, no, this thing is too much. His parents agreed. Now, Fanyani Arusi Sasa. The issue is to Fanyapi. My child cannot accept. My pastor said, no, he's not the one. You go ahead, but I'm not joining this wedding. He's not your husband. So we had to go to another church that is not spiritual. Yeah. And they agreed. So I'm not naming names, but we went to a church. They agreed. And we wedded. Just before our wedding, uh, I, was, uh, I was retrenched from where I was working a month before. That was a sign from God. Yeah. Stop it. But I was like, I'm still doing business. Nikonado, I can hack this. We went ahead and did the wedding. He had lost his job like two months before me. So that time he was doing nothing, absolutely So nothing. you were both jobless? Yes, but I had my businesses. Tudogo, tudogo, tutuamta too. But we were okay. So we did the wedding and we settled. The moment we did the wedding, the day we did the wedding, I came to realize this later. My sister-in-law was telling me, I, 2015 is when, the year 2015 is when she was telling me that I was telling them, Ia Rusi nafanya najua kuna mungu. Natakatuni patepete. Ndioniheshimike. She started telling me that I used to tell them that day. I knew what I was doing. It was just a formality. To my surprise, when we did the wedding that day, as we went to bed, I had a voice tell me, you have no marriage. You just have a paper, which is not acknowledged in heaven. I thought I was crazy. I told my best maid. She was like, Janet, we mambuzako ningumu. So I forgot about it and we moved on with life. It was very frustrating because I now saw the true colors of this guy. He started disappearing on Friday, coming back on Monday. He goes on Friday that Anenda Kuna Mamake comes back on Friday. It went to a point he disappears for a week. To Kaendelea, he disappears for a month. To Kaendelea, even a year. Life became very difficult. I had to, I hadn't known that I had backslidden. This is when it got to me that, eh, Tuliwachana na God. Mm -hmm. So I had to get myself together back again, to God. back to God. That time, I was going to the market at 25 crates, my goodness me, all the way to Jericho, selling them. I have tried everything. The moment these guys disappear, like for a month, we are having everything working well. When he comes back, we, are, we have no food, you have no nothing, poverty strikes in. I was like, wait, there's a pattern here. When this guy is away, things are good. When he comes, things are tough. Ata biashara isongi. So that's when I started now getting my understanding. God was for serious. Wow. This guy, we are not going anywhere. And even that time, God was telling me, we are with him in the house, and God is still speaking to me. He's not your husband. I'm like, God, you know I love this guy. Yeah, but he's Did not. he love you the same way, or you, or you loved him more than he loved you? I loved him more. Wow. It was one-sided. Wow. Maybe he didn't know how to show love. He's yeah. a Maasai. Maybe that was a thing, but I never saw that love. Wow. It figured a point, I was like, you know what? We have to separate. I had to talk to him. I told him, no, I can't live this life anymore. The burden is too much. I'm married, but I'm like a single woman because I'm taking care of everything in the house. So eventually he got a job, but still his support was minimal. And that's when he started going a lot when we, he got the job. Is it that he remarried or what happened? He had not remarried then. I don't know that he's married today. He had, I cannot say about his personal life. Mm -hmm. But he had not. He used to go visiting people, which was very awkward. I used to ask him, how? How do you visit people? How do you leave us on Friday, come back on Monday? That time we were going through a very, very dry spell in the house. At Yukwa Kunaga, we can't watch video. Soon and Amalin to watch a video. I told him only that. DVD too. Ngoja. I told God, give me a DVD. God, give me. Come to Sasa to watch a movie. Apa. Apa, akuna company, akuna pombe, akuna nini, akuna mira. So he now started drinking. He was still drinking. No, after we got together now and now I'm still born again. Kumbe, he wasn't drinking because he doesn't like drinking. Now I came to realize he had ulcers. So I prayed to God to heal him. 
and the ulcers went, and the beer came in. So he started drinking. Wow. Yeah, wow. so we lived like that until at some point I was like, no, me, I can't live this life. Uh, now God forgave me, gave me a good job, and my life got back to normal, and we were living a good life with my children. Uh, one of those priests, he disappeared for one and a half years. He came back. I got pregnant again. He disappeared again. Wow. Got pregnant with my last one now. He disappeared again. And this when I, was, I went into a depression. I can't hack this. It was too tough. But I made a decision I don't want anything. And when he came back, you didn't ask him to explain where he was? No, I loved him. You loved him. Mm. Wow. Our viewers, <laughs> it, I don't know whether it can get, it can get <laughs> lower than this. But it tells you that when a man loves, he can be deceived into getting into a pit. Yeah. And I pray that wherever you are, in case you're in that situation, run before it's too late, like yes. Pastor Janet. Yes. I'll see you after the break. Welcome back, our viewer. My guest is Pastor Janet. My goodness, life has hardened her. Yes. So now he comes back, you forgive. Yes. So at what point did you live now completely and how did you heal and where are you now? Now, I forgive him. And my mom was very annoyed about it. Because mm -hmm. she was like, you can't see your life is going on the wrong direction. Mm -hmm. I told you about it. I was like, mommy, let me give him the last chance. So when he came back this time now, we are together, but he still goes away again. Now he's come back, we are together, but now he's going every Friday coming Monday. So he improved, he started going Friday coming Sunday. Now I was just fed up somewhere, somehow, I just felt I can't live this life any, anymore. Because yes, I'm even having a ministry already. Was he remorseful? No. No, he was okay. So right now I've gone into ministry, sorry. The year 1998 is when God called me into ministry. I fought and rebelled with it. I was like, God, you know I can't do this. I mean, how do we live? After a lot of struggle, I told God, now just do me one favor. Cause them to retrench me. Wow. Yes. That was a dangerous prayer. Mm. If it is you, cause them to, because I was the best employee of the year. Cause them. And then out of blue, just like that, I go and leave coming back, retrenchment letter. I was like, okay, but this is God. That, during that time, God had told me to leave that office. He's going to give me a job in the biggest bank in the world. And he'll give me a lot of money. And I was like, <laughs> I could be hearing my own things. That's why I was like, cause them to retrench me. And so there I went. I was retrenched. January 5th, 1999. That's when I was retrenched. I go home, I'm very excited. God has done it. So I'm like, okay, each of your bank, he come. I was really looking forward to that one. <laughs> in the meantime, I'm trying to talk to people here and there. Whoever tries to employ me in the office, the company goes down. Wow. Whoever tries to connect me to anyone, they are sacked or something wrong happens to them. Hey, I try a business, it's not working. Before it was working, now it's not, when I need it most. So I told God, okay, in the meantime, as I wait, let me just have you to gather in my house. We just studied the word of God. So we just started like that. Not a ministry. Ni Bible study too. Yeah. yeah, those ones that have finished from four, started eight. We just chat, talk in the house. And that's how my ministry was birthed. Wow. I just started to ministering to them like that. I always say I didn't know when I went to ministry, I found myself in ministry. Because I didn't plan to. I, w I wasn't going to plan to. I had refused. Definitely. Because the people I had come across mm -hmm. were all suffering. In ministry. In ministry. Yeah. I was like, God, I don't want to do this thing. <laughs> I have supported these people. I don't want to be part of them. I know. Yeah, so that's yeah. why I didn't want. Mm -hmm. I didn't have another reason apart from that. It was only money. I, I hate poverty. Yeah. I have been through it. I and didn't the, want the, to. The, the kind of people you saw are very beggarly in their attitude. Yes, very much. Say, yeah. Going from one house to another. Eh, hey, nimekuja kutembelea, kuku encourage nini. Unajua mtumishi sasa naenda lazima kafea. 
So I hated that kind of a lifestyle. Yeah. And since God is calling me and he's telling me, Usian's a church. So I'm like, while I work on a church, I don't see them suffering that much. Mm -hmm. But if I don't have a church, then how am I going to live? I didn't know how they live. But I had a ministry of ministering to ministers, like wow. shopping for them, bailing them out. Mm -hmm. Of course, to come to Jerry, Johanna rent, mm -hmm. school fees, something like so. I used to do that a lot. And I was, I was like, God, I'm comfortable doing this. Wow. I'm still serving. So anyway, when I went home and I started that fellowship, that's how my ministry started. I have never gone to work since then. So how do you minister to them? Do you gather them in churches or how uh, is your I used to go to church? schools. Mm -hmm. I used to minister to them in schools, in estates. I, like, just a woman would, or a lady or a brother would, I have my brother who's going through this and that challenge, please come talk to them. Just like that. I just, they're in their own churches, but I just walk with them from their own churches. Mm -hmm. Others are not even in churches. Mm -hmm. I walk with them leave them in a church. That's how I used to do it. And uh, I also used to go to high schools a lot oh, yeah. to minister to them in high schools. But that had uh, 2013, I went through some turbulence that we can't talk about now because of time. Yeah. And I had a setback in ministry yeah. and went back, came back to ministry in 2018 last year. Okay. Yeah, so I was out of ministry for five years. Okay. So when I came back now, I found myself, God led me to Jesus. Can you say it in brief, what kind of setback? Was it rejection? What was yeah, it? a lot of rejection yeah. and uh, fights with my ex yeah. and uh, my firstborn daughter. Yeah. So we had a lot of issues. issues. Okay, so you are so, now officially separated and divorced? Yes, I yeah. was officially divorced in 2010. Okay. Yeah, officially. Mm -hmm. So there was just some matters that came up, family matters, mm -hmm. that uh, really hit me so hard. Yeah. And I decided not to minister first. Okay. I was hurting. Mm -hmm. I needed to heal first. But your daughter is okay now? Yeah, they are okay. okay. She's okay. okay now. She's okay. Wow. They are all okay. We, I talk to all of them now. I'm healed now. Mm -hmm. And I have approached them, so we are good. Yeah. As a minister, you have to forgive yeah. whether you want it or not. It's true. So I had to. And okay. now we are buddies. We do talk. Okay. Yeah, with all of them. With even the, your ex-husband? Yeah. yeah. Oh, does he have a relationship with the kids? Not a perfect one. Because mm -hmm. it started by, he doesn't want, every time I tell him we meet with the, with the girls, he's, they're all girls. Yeah. And he complains, like he buys us lunch for 2000 Mume maliza pesa yangu. Oh, wow. Just 2000 after two years. You don't know what they eat, you don't know where they live, you don't know how they go to school, you have no idea, nothing, not even airtime, and yet you complain of only 2,000. Mm -hmm. So I felt that was hurting the girls. Mm -hmm. He has never asked to see them, I refuse. Wow. I only push it myself. Yeah, because you felt it's necessary to have a relationship. Yeah, they need dad. to know their dad. Okay. Yeah, as much as they don't want, yeah. they really don't want. They really don't want. They really don't want. But he's want. not abusive to them. No, no, no. no. Okay. Initially, he used to be verbal. Yeah. Yeah. But nowadays they are grown up, he cannot even do he it. He cannot even yeah, do they, it. Yeah, he cannot wow. even do it. Yeah. Well, probably talking to that camera, what is your parting shot to somebody who loves a man who does not love them? Because I think that's the highlight of the story, where you are in love with somebody who did not love you more, like you loved him. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I would say, number one, listen to your parents. Mm -hmm. Even if, especially your mother, mm -hmm. even if she's not born again, mm -hmm. and you are very born again, Filled with the Holy Ghost. Mm -hmm. Listen to your mom. There's yeah. always something they can see yeah. that we can see. It's true. My mom was not even um, a Pentecostal. Yeah. But she could see beyond. It's true. And she started, even before she got born again, she started refusing even before she was born again. And even now, later when she got born again, she would still see. So listen to those that are advising you. Because it always, they are always right. It's true. They, it cannot be that you're the only one who is right. It's true. So everyone around me was saying no. But I kept on insisting, this is it. Yeah. I have learned the hard way. And because of what I have learned, I go sharing with the rest of the youth so that they don't go through what I went through. Mm -hmm. Those that have ears won't go through what I went through. I believe my children will not repeat such a mistake yeah. because of what I've gone through. I thank God for the privilege he's given me now back. I'm also working with the Evangelical Alliance of Kenya yes. in the missions board. I'm yeah. a member, so we go for missions with them. 
and uh, it's a way I can reach out now to, to a wider people. range of the youth. Mm -hmm. Work with them. My strength is working with them. Mm -hmm. Those that are not stable in their salvation, mm -hmm. stable in their work with God. My strength is working with them, mm -hmm. mentoring them, encouraging them until they stand mm -hmm. and become the men and women that God created them to be. Amen. Amen. Wow, what an inspiration. Amen. And um, to God be the glory for Amen. what he has done. Mm -hmm. Finally, to every single parent mm -hmm. that is parenting on their own. Because yeah. you are married, yeah. but it's like you are doing parenting alone. Yes. Um, what word of encouragement would you have uh, to them, Pastor Janet? As a single parent, I would say this. Regardless whether it's a single mom or a single dad, yeah. be there for your children. Yeah. Remember that you are the mother, you are the father. Yeah. So that you have to be tough. And you have to be loving at the same time. Yeah. Let them not miss somebody to talk to. Let, let them know that once they come to you, you'll be there to listen to them. Yeah. Also, it's a very challenging thing because at times you tend to be soft, fearing that would I be too hard on them and then they would go away. No. Yeah. Remember to, to ask God to, to give you the wisdom and the strength mm -hmm. to be able to balance. Let them have what they would have had. It's not easy, but I'm telling you God's grace is sufficient. My children can testify. Mm -hmm. I have been able to give them a best life. Amen. I always say I'm the best mom. Amen. I always say I'm the best mom. And I'm sure they would vouch for that. So what is it that gave you strength all these years to be, to be the best that you can be? God. Amen. I base my strength in God. I trusted, I still do trust very much in God. Mm -hmm. And I believe if God has worked with me mm -hmm. since 1999 to date, still doing full-time ministry, I have no business. Years now. 20 years now. 20 years. And God told me not to do any business, but his business. Yes. He provides for us. Amen. He commands the ravens to bring Amen. my children to eat, clothe, go to school, pay our house rent, I'm driving. Amen. All that God has done. Glory to God. All that God has done. Amen. If anyone would have told me when I was in Jerry, mm -hmm. Unable to pay the rent of 600 shillings. Mm -hmm. That I would be paying over 60,000 shillings for rent. Amen. That I would be driving on these Nairobi roads. I yes. would not have believed. It's but true. my faith in God. I'm a woman of faith. Amen. I believe in trusting in God. If God tells me there is a way through this world. Yes. Even if you tell me there is no way, I'll tell you there is a way. So obedience and Obedience has been the thing in my life. Amen. At times people think I've lost it because I obey what others don't see what I'm obeying. But I know by the end of the day they will say, surely she had had God. Amen. And that has been my testimony. Amen. Working with God, trusting God, even in the thickest of thick, thickness, yeah. I still believe God that he will get me out of it. Amen. And he has never let me down. Just like his word, he'll never leave you. Amen. He'll never forsake you. Amen. I've never seen like David. He has never forsaken me Amen. and my children. We've never been thrown out of the house Glory that we can't pay God. rent. Amen. My children have not stayed home without school fees. Amen. They used to when I was with my husband, oh. my ex-husband. Wow. Right now, I've never seen my children. And they've gone to, inter and especially the last one, mm. has been to an international school. Glory to God. She's in an international university. Amen. By the grace of God. Amen. So I know your faith in God and obedience is key. Yes. Trust God. Obey him. Obey him to the latter. Amen. Don't worry what it may seem like. At times, it doesn't make sense when God speaks to you. Yeah. Just follow. Amen. Trust and obey. For there is no other way Amen. but to trust in Jesus. Glory be to God. I Amen. think our take home out of Pastor Jan Janet Dennis' story is that the longer you wait to obey God, mm -hmm. the more the tribulations you have to endure. Mm -hmm. It's mm -hmm. always important, as she has said, listen to your parents, significant people mm -hmm. that God has placed in your life. Mm -hmm. And number two, don't be hard-headed. Mm -hmm. When everybody else around you can see mm -hmm. that what you're getting into is wrong, mm -hmm. don't always be the one who is uh, you know, presuming to be right. And number three, obey God, because whatever is happening around your life mm -hmm. is choreographed around your destiny. So mm -hmm. the, mm -hmm. the longer it takes for you to get to your destiny, mm -hmm. the happier the enemy will be because you will have wounded you and wasted your time. Mm -hmm. But I pray today, as a single parent, as a divorced person, as a married person, single person, whatever place you are at, I pray that God of all grace will walk with you and shorten your days in the wilderness. From me, it's from the Gorgeous Woman Show, is God bless you, God do you good, and may you stay inspired. Reverend Ruth Wamo is my name. See you next time. Bye-bye. Mm -hmm.